Hey folks, I'm Shay Parker, and this is another episode of What Is On Your Mind, uh, the show where I talk to members of the board gaming media community to talk about whatever it is that they want to talk about, because there's more to life than board games. That's heresy, I know, but it's true. Uh, and today I have my good friend Nick Murphy of the Brothers Murphy. Hello, Nick. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so you at home will know Nick Murphy, of course, uh, of Brothers Murph fame, uh, both on YouTube and on Twitch, and the shirt that he's wearing. Um, uh, you will also see him on Gen Con's uh, Twitch channels. He's also one of the hosts of the This Game is Broken, an excellent board gaming panel show, and Death by Monsters, a wonderful paranormal podcast, and it is creepy and weird, and I love it. Um, he's also on Board, does board games, uh, board game geeks in focus videos along with his brother Mike. There's a lot of things, but I don't want to talk about any of that. None. I want to know what you want to talk about. Nick, yeah. what is on your mind? What's on my mind? Oh, stars. <laughs> I have no idea. Uh, the thing I want to talk about, to, I love this series, by the way. I think it's such a cool thing oh, of just be you. like, let's talk about something that's not board games, but with board game people. I think it's, I think it's cool. Um, and so... Something that I like a lot, I'm, I'm very passionate about, is art. Um, and and I, I I started doing art a while ago, and I've it's it's kind of grown into this thing that I did, and then I kind of didn't really like for a long time, but then started doing more and started to enjoy it. Then maybe thought like, oh, is this something I want to do? Is like maybe a job? Maybe then I was like, no, I don't. And now it's really very much I just do it. 100% for me. But I do like uh, art and I like to draw specifically. Um, I draw with uh, markers, Copic markers for the most part. And then I've started doing more digital stuff lately, which has uh, been kind of a cool journey and been very uh, freeing in a lot of different ways. I, I, w I want to talk more about this because I've always been fascinated by artists uh, or uh, like specifically um, like sketch artists or people who can draw yeah, and paint visual that, artists, that kind yeah. of artist. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And be, uh, because I've always wanted to draw, but I do not have the patience to get good at drawing. That's fair. Well, see, so. here's the thing though. I, I fundamentally dis I disagree with the idea of being good at drawing. Because I think I think the concept I feel like that's easy to say when you're so good at drawing. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, that's fair. And I had to put a many years into being. But I I I think the concept of art and being quote unquote good or bad at art is a fallacy because there's art is so all encompassing. And and I think when people say like, oh, I'm not good at drawing, what they mean is they're not good at drawing realistic stuff because that's the stuff that you have to be quote unquote good at. Like if you're trying to draw a realistic face and it doesn't look realistic, then you're like, well, I didn't do that well. But I, I think art is so large. And like, I, I work in realism, like, and I'll probably send you some artwork if you want to show it or whatever, but it's like, I work in realism oh, yeah. because that's- uh, Let's, let's, we're gonna, I'm gonna put up some uh, <laughs> pieces while we're talking because uh, I've seen some of Nick's art and it is fantastic. I honestly think that you are incredibly talented. Uh, and I, even though you're saying that it's a fallacy of being good at art, if there if there is objective truth to this, you are good at art. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> no, but it's it's one of those things where it's like I, I used to teach art at a, a, a drug rehab facility that I worked at. I was the art coordinator. I, I ran the whole art program. And like one thing that I kind of learned through that was just like trying to meet people where they at are at artistically. Um, because like not every, everyone wants to be able to like, oh, I want to be able to paint like a beautiful portrait, you know, like, like Da Vinci or whatever. You know? Um, and it's like one of those things where like, I think that's great if that's what you want to do. But like I had one client who didn't know what he wanted to do, had no idea. And so somehow we landed on like, kind of like splatter art where he would just take art and a brush and just throw it at a canvas and he would just spend hours doing it. He loved it and it really allowed him to express himself. And this, and I'm not a big fan of abstract art, like just personally, it's like, like, and I used to really rally against it being like, it's not art, all you're doing is drawing triangles on a canvas and part of me still feels that way. But nonetheless, <laughs> it's like through really, through specifically this, this gentleman, um, really made me appreciate like how much expression he put into something that was literally just him like, flicking paint at a canvas but the colors he would choose and like where he would put stuff was really important to him and it really made me appreciate that kind of like abstract art and while i i don't personally like abstract art from a viewer standpoint i understand now how powerful it can be to certain people and so and and he is someone who you could arguably say is not good at art because he couldn't draw a person 
we tried and he couldn't do it. It didn't work for him, but that did. And so I don't like the concept of being good at art because I think art is so, dude, people do weird stuff and call it art, man. People put <laughs> toilets on walls and like put a teddy bear inside and they're like art and everyone's like, damn, that's deep. You know, it's like art is everything. And now if you want to be good at like realism art, which is what I do, sure, you're going to have to practice. You're going to have to work at it. But I, 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 two things I, I fundamentally believe. I think everyone is an artist and I think everyone can dance. I fundamentally disagree when people say, I can't dance. Wrong. Everyone can dance. You can, if you can move your body. You can move your body, you're dancing. It's like gaming. If I want to talk about gaming, but it's like, it doesn't matter what kind of game you like. If you like games, you're a gamer. You know, it's same with like art. I, I, I feel, I really fundamentally feel that way. So what is it that first got you like really interested in art? Is it just something that you've always done or no. was there anything specifically that you found yourself really enjoying creating? So I've always created, Mike, who was on a previous episode, um, we're brothers, obviously, um, <laughs> and, and we're both creators. We have to be creating at all times. doesn't matter what it is, whether it's board game content or, for me, art. Mike is an actor. We always have to be creating. It's just something we've always done. I didn't draw. Like, a lot of people who do art, with like, oh, you know, he used to always just, like, draw on, like, napkins and stuff. Like, I didn't. I started drawing in high school because I got thrown into an art class. And it was one of those situations where like I drew a pair of shoes because I had to do an assignment and I was like, all right, I'll draw these shoes. And I drew them like relatively well. And then I was like, oh, I can kind of do that. And so then I just kind of started drawing a little bit more, but it was really, and then I eventually got to where I am now. But my journey is kind of weird because it wasn't, it was really empty for up until I would say probably like five or six years ago, my art was really, really empty in the fact that like I did it, but I didn't enjoy it. I really didn't enjoy doing art at all. But I started, I did it enough where I started getting better and better at like realism drawings to the point where like you could be, cons I could be considered like a good artist. And then I kind of kept doing it because I felt this weird like self-imposed obligation to do it where they kind of like, well, if you're good at something, that means you have to keep doing it, which I don't agree with anymore. But I, so I kind of kept, I kind of kept doing it and I would literally force myself to spend like months on a drawing that I didn't want to do because I just felt like I had to and people then knew that I drew. So then people were like, when's the next drawing? What's the next drawing? And then like, I would kind of do it. And it wasn't until I discovered this kind of new way of doing something that I started enjoying doing art for the first time, honestly, to the point now where like, it's something that I have to do at least to some degree uh, to keep myself just creativity uh, alive. Um, and what that came down to was something that like, I've really come to realize is very important for me when it comes to creation. And that's um, creativity within structure is something that I, I, I need, and I think a lot of people, more people than they think need. Uh, and that's, having being creative but having some kind of foundation or structure around it that then i can be creative in like finding some kind of foundation yeah. and then being creative within that foundation like I, you, you know you, you're in go ahead continue oh i would say i i've always uh believed in this in this idea because um i mean i think as gamers we experience this not to always bring it back to board games but like this is, I think, what leads to analysis paralysis because you see so many options and yeah. you don't know what you want to do. Yes, yes. Whenever you give yourself these structural like guidelines, mm -hmm. that allows you to fill the space more. I think. Yeah. So, that, so I, I totally, I totally get that part of it, and I think that's, uh, I, I've felt the same way in a lot of, uh, a lot of experiences. Yeah, I think it's really important. Uh, uh, and, and there are some people, I think everyone likes to think of themselves as like, I'm just free. I'm a free spirit. I want just, sure. and, and most people don't. And that's great. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But most people require or desire some kind of structure, some kind of routine. It's like the worst thing uh, that could happen in school would be like, hey, write a paper about anything. And I'm like, oh my God, yeah. Can you just tell me something to write about and then I'll write about it? You know, it's like the yeah. worst, like the most terrifying thing to me is like a blank canvas. Because mm. it's just, the whole point is like, it can be anything. But I'm like, yeah, but that's bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, that's scary. Or like, if you're a writer, to me, like, the worst thing would be, like, I don't write. I'm not like a creative writer at all. But it's like a blank sheet of paper is terrifying. Because you're just mm. like, what do, I, what do I write, you know? And you exactly. need to have some kind of structure. And so 
when I've, I discovered a kind of way, like I always, I always worked in black and white when I drew and I still do in a lot of different ways, but I work in black and white because I'm not very good at color theory. And so I would do black and white cause I'm good at value contrast, but I'm not good at color theory. So like, I'm not good at like drawing in a way that looks like a really realistic like skin tone, but I'm really good at like light to dark basically. So I'm very good at like shadows. I can draw realism that way. So everything I did was black and white, but I love color. I'm a very loud, vibrant person in general, but I could never do it cause I just didn't feel like I could. And then I came across an artist named uh, Joshua Roman. Um, he has an Instagram channel. Uh, it's just Joshua Roman art. I believe I think he has a website as well, but he, does realistic drawings with very, very unconventional colors. He does these really incredible drawings that are realistic in terms of the people look like people, proportions are right, shading is right, all that kind of stuff is right, but like just uses wild colors. And it was just so like, holy crap, this is a thing that you can do? Like I didn't know. And so then I started kind of emulating him and finding my own style. But what it came down to is what I've, I realized is like, I need to have the structure. The structure for me is realism. Like I'm not good at like, I'm gonna draw some abstract person and I, I can't do that. I, the way my brain works is like, I, I'm too much of a perfectionist, I think. So like, I have to make it real looking, but I want to be able to express myself. So like the structure for me is realism. I do mostly portrait work. So it's like the structure, if I'm drawing you Shay, it's like, I'll draw you. But then, so the structure, oh. So, but the structure is, is the realism, but then the creativity can come everywhere else. So I can put you in some kind of creative world or I could like make your skin not normal skin color. I can have all these wild colors and stuff. And that kind of freedom of finding the, creativ the creativity within a structure made me enjoy it. It started making me go down this road of like using very unconventional colors and, and it really kind of opened up the whole thing for me. And so I didn't always draw, I didn't always like drawing for a long time, but now I do because I kind of found my, what works for me, I guess. All right, well, thank you so much for talking to me about this. I've had a, such a wonderful time discussing art with you. I think, yeah. that's, I think that it's something that is, like you said, everyone is an artist. Everyone, I think at the very least is capable of art, but I yes. do think that we stop ourselves from expressing ourselves yeah um, and that is something that I think I think everyone yeah. could stand to, to uh, try yeah. out a little bit more yeah yeah uh, broaden your view of what is expressing yourself and you'll find something you like exactly um, okay so again thank you so much for for talking to me uh, is, is there anything that's going on uh, with brothers Murph or with you specifically that you want people to know about um, just check out our YouTube channel. Uh, we've worked with Shay here before. Uh, check out our YouTube channel. Check us out on Twitch, twitch.tv slash The Brothers Murph. Um, we are live streaming there all the time. Check out the podcast, as we um, said. And that's that's pretty much it. Yeah, we're just trying to do some fun, different stuff. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Awesome. And yeah, like we were talking about this a little bit before, but uh, on your YouTube channel, you are always doing all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, that's uh, right. Which I really appreciate it. Always keeping things fresh. And, yeah. Uh, so everyone, go check them out. Uh, and thank you so much for watching. Yeah. Bye, Bye folks. Hey, so that interview went uh, pretty long, and it's no surprise, Nick's one of my best friends. We could talk for a long time, and we did. And if you want to see the entire extended interview, you can do so at the Patreon page, patreon.com slash RTFM. And also, I really enjoyed making these interviews. Uh, the last three that I've done uh, were kind of an experiment, and if you like them as much as I like them, please let me know. I would love to make more, but I also want to make sure that you guys want to watch them. So let me know in the comments, donate to the Patreon, watch the extended interview, and be nice to people.